In topic six, which is fields and forces, um, it's actually a topic that I think it doesn't take that much time to get through because there's a, there's a few key things and once you know those, most of it then is fairly straightforward. Uh, first of all is what we call force fields and uh, how we draw field lines. That's the first thing I'd like to show you. So first of all, what is a force field? I mean, that sounds really high tech or something, right? I mean, a force field, that sounds like something from, I don't know, from like Star Wars or something, right? But uh, force field, uh, what that is, that's just, um, that's when a mass or a charge feels a force. Uh, well, not when, but where. So where a mass or charge feels a force. Well, that sounds a bit stupid as a definition. So we're saying a force field is a place where something feels a force. Yep. Um, the way that we draw these field lines is a bit arbitrary as far as uh, how many lines to draw. Um, but what I'm going to show you is some of the rules that we have to draw them and what it is that those can do for us. So there's going to be three main types of things we're going to be talking about, either gravitational, electric, or magnetic. So I'm going to show you first of all how we deal with gravitational field lines. So gravitational field lines. And this is going to be we draw them as um, the direction a test mass would go. That's actually how we draw these. That might seem really silly. I'll just give you a quick uh, little drawing here. So let's just say this right here is the Earth. Let's say. Um, so there it is. That's the Earth. And what I want to do now is draw myself, just imagine, I mean, of course the earth is really big, I just don't want to use up all my board space, just on a big circle. So this is the earth, it's curved, and if we, if we dropped a test mass, and when I say test mass, I just mean, just imagine you put anything with mass, and let's say you dropped it right, you put it right here. Where would it go? Well, you know about gravity normally, and gravity goes downwards in this case, in other words, towards the center of mass of this object. What about if I dropped it here? Well, then it would go this way. What if I drop it here? It would go that way. And see, of course, as we go around, there would be these arrows pointing that way. Those are gravitational field lines. Now, we're going to be doing similar things with electric and magnetic. The key is here that the more lines you draw, in other words, what if I drew like five or ten lines, then the stronger it implies that the field is. In other words, if I had one drawing with only five lines and one drawing with only two lines, clearly one with five is stronger than the one with two. So it's a bit arbitrary, but you can still compare them. Now, we could have chose to always draw them uh, going away. That doesn't matter. Okay? The field lines just help us to have a convention. So, for example, with electric field lines, okay, I'm just going to say electric, but electric field lines, same sort of thing, except this time it's the direction that a positive test charge would go. That's the key thing here. So we could have chosen, because in uh, electricity, well, at least with, um, uh, with what we call static electricity, which is things not moving, uh, we have something called charge. And charge can be positive or negative. So we had to choose some sort of arbitrary, are we going to choose the direction that a positive would go or a negative? So it was decided that it would be the direction that a positive test charge would go. So that means then you can take a look at lots of different situations and see, well, just imagine a little imaginary, uh, I guess that's redundant, the department, uh, the department of redundancy department. Um, what, what I mean here is that we can imagine a positive test charge just being dropped somewhere and then take a look at where it would go. So since we know about uh, charges, hopefully, uh, that a positive and a positive, they repel each other. A negative and a negative also repel, but a positive and a negative attract. That comes from that sort of lame uh, expression we say opposites attract. Uh, not always, but um, in electricity at least, always. 
in our own lives, maybe not. But uh, so it's the direction a positive test charge would go. That's the key definition. And that means I can give you a few examples. So what if I have just a positive? So if I've just got some sort of positive thing here, then I want to draw the field lines around that. So that just means I just have to pick a random spot. Let's say I pick uh, right here. If I put a positive charge right here, where would it go? Well, a positive test charge, by definition, doesn't like this positive thing. It's going to be repelled, so it'll go straight away. And it turns out if I took, that, uh, if I took a charge here, it would go away. If I put one here, it would go away. If I put one here, it would go away. I mean, it depends how many lines I feel like drawing, but it will go what we say radially outward. Of course, if this was a negative charge, you know, a negative right here, then my field lines, they're still defined as the direction a positive would go, so that means the field lines would go inwards. So that's how it works. Now we can do combinations though. We can do something like, um, what if I had, so this is a new situation, what if I had a positive and a negative? So this is the sort of object I'm looking at, something with positive and negative there. And the question might be, what do the field lines look like? Well, let's say uh, here, if I, put a field, uh, if I put a positive charge right here, where would it go? It's always the direction that a positive would go. Well, it would go straight towards that one, right? It would like it, because it'd be attracted to that. What about if I made it sort of go out? Well, it would go out, but then it would be attracted by that one. That's why the lines would go like this, and like this, and they even go wider if you feel like it. I mean, they go as wide as you feel like drawing. Basically, they would all go away from this and towards that one. You can go even wider, same thing would happen. Now, what if I have another situation? Uh, what if I have two parallel charged plates? That could be a situation. So I would have, uh, let's say, one piece right here that's all positive. Let's say I have one here that's all negative. Negative, 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 negative. So if this is a charged plate, I can also try to figure out which way the field lines would be drawn. In other words, uh, imagine then inside here, imagine right here, I drop a positive test charge. Where would it go? Well, it will be repelled from this one, attracted to that one, so it go like this, and like this, and like this. Now what about at the edges? Well, it would go out, but then come back in, and it would go out and come back in. Do you see how you can draw field lines for just about anything you can imagine? It might get more and more complicated, but this is the idea behind it. Now last, but certainly not least, is magnetic. So the magnetic field lines is the direction that a compass would point. If you know what a compass is. So um, a magnetic compass, I have one, for example, I have a little smartphone here, it's, uh, it's an Android here, I don't have an iPhone, but it's a little Android one, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got like a little compass right here, which means, you know, um, if you're ever out, let's say, traveling in the woods and you're lost and you know which way you have to go, let's say you want to go south, then if you have a compass, it's a little magnetic device, and what it does is the north on a compass will always point that way. So in other words, this is the direction that, maybe I should say, the north on a compass. Okay, so it's the direction that the north on a compass would point. So for example, uh, now in this case, we can't just have a positive charge or a negative charge like we had here. In uh, magnetic things, we talk about north or south. And north and north don't like each other. South and south don't like each other. So those repel. But the weird thing is we can't just have a single charge. Like here I drew just a positive. You can't have that in uh, magnetism. You don't have uh, what we call a magnetic monopole. So we have to have a north and a south. So let's just say I draw a north here and a south here, and I have what's called a bar magnet, let's say, something like this. Okay, that could be my little magnet that I put here. Well, how will the field lines look around it? Well, just imagine you're a little compass. Would the north point towards north of my compass or would it point away? Well, north and north don't like each other. It would point away. 
So it'll do a little bit like uh, what happened over here. It'll go like this over here. The field lines will go out like this and out like this. Okay, so they'll go sort of around and out. So that's kind of neat. So that's the way that the, uh, just imagine you're a compass then, and it's the north of a compass. It's going to point away from the north. And that might make you think, holy moly, hold on a second. What happens on Earth then? This is a small little distinction. I think it's kind of fun to uh, talk about, but I'll just do this off to the side because it's not so important, but I think it's kind of neat. This is the Earth. The Earth can be said to be, you know, it could be approximated by a bar magnet as far as how our magnetic uh, poles work. So imagine just a bar magnet running right through the center of the Earth. And you might think, well, you know, when we draw maps, we always draw the North Pole being, you know, somewhere in the Arctic. You know, northern Canada or Scandinavia or Russia or Greenland, they all sort of are up there. Now, we call it magnetic north, but it's actually a south. When we say the North Pole, it's actually, magnetically speaking, it's actually a south. You might think, what? But that's because your, your uh, compass, the north of your compass, points towards that way. So that's a, just a weird little distinction. So you could actually say that uh, everything actually goes like this right here. The field lines actually go like this because they have to point upwards, don't they, if it's the Earth. You want all the field lines going that way. So that's uh, just a, a way or just a quick introduction to how we draw field lines. They're very important uh, in fields and forces, and as you can see, it's just a matter of a convention of which way we choose to draw those arrows.